Don't look yet, don't look yet. I won't. I know the rules of look away, dude. I'm an idiot. <laughs> What is up, watch fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Watch Shop. My name is Michael. This video is sponsored by Masterworks. You should invest in art. Terrific. More on them later. Yes. Today we are talking about uh, Succession, the watches that were featured in the show Succession. Um, if you haven't already seen it, uh, up to date, uh, spoil. then please don't watch this. Yes. We're going to spoil it. Season four, episode four is all that's out right now. So if it's five by the time this comes out, we won't spoil that. You're safe. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we're not just going to be talking about the watches and reviewing the watches. I want to talk about, you know, what are the implications of the watches? Do they have any significance? I know through reading other things that um, the costume designers did a remarkable job in, in putting like theory behind the clothing that people wore. Oh, yeah. So does the same thing apply for the watches? Do the watches mean anything at all? And one character specifically, I think it's dead on. And, and uh, there's other characters where the watches they get explain other characters, of course, but mm -hmm. there is one central character who, I said this to you because I was, I was dying to have Christian catch up on Succession because you rewatched the mm -hmm. entire series, and I was like, you're going to have the worst spoiler if you wait any longer. Yeah. But there's one character who every watch, you're like, oh, that's not really the watch I'd expect, but I think it makes sense, and I think it has a lot to do with how things are going to play out. The first moment that watches are relevant in succession, I believe, is actually season one, episode one. Yes. Uh, Tom yep. Wamsgams is deciding what to give Logan for his birthday. Yes. Um, and ultimately decides on a watch. It's kind of a funny interaction between him and his him and Shiv, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and he decides to get him a Patek Philippe. And this is when Tom is nothing. Tom is nothing. Yeah. So he gives Logan the watch, and do you remember what uh, Tom says to him? Uh, it's really accurate or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it's really, it's a Patek Philippe. It's really accurate. It tells you exactly how rich you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. So and Logan can't be, that was a brilliant episode because you immediately, Logan can't be any less enthused. Well, Logan says, I have a watch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! Okay. And that same line comes, comes later on in the show as well. Really? And we'll talk about that. Yes. Uh, so, so Logan says, I have a watch. Now, why? What does that mean, right? What sort of person would react that way to a gift of a Patek Philippe. And that's interesting. Yeah. Right? What do you yeah. think? What are your thoughts though? Let's start what there. Type the of first person? big question. Well, for Why one, would Logan act that way? Yeah. Well, what's interesting is this episode does a brilliant job of showing every side of Logan right away. Mm. And that to me is the stop trying to kiss up, stop trying to be this and that. Like, I am the power player. I have that. I can buy a watch. And you can't buy me. Yeah, right. That's it. And it never goes away. I have it a watch. It never goes away. Exactly. Yeah. That's very fascinating. Um, that's very old school, like patriarch, yep. you know. Yeah, I have a watch. I don't need yours. Right. Thanks. Kind of awkward, very uncomfortable to watch people. You're like, Logan, are you kidding? That's a great watch. Be grateful. But it's more significant than that. A guy like that, there is no moment off. There is no kind acceptance of a birthday gift. Everything is business. Yeah. And I cannot let Tom feel good about himself. I need to remind him right now that I'm the boss. Crazy. Brutal. And, and then it goes a step further where that that was the most cr cringy opening episode ever where Roman promises this family a million dollars if their son can hit a home run. Yeah, it's their son. son. So you're watching the parents and this kid almost makes it and Roman rips the checkup. It's disgusting. And this is the point where they, the directors, the producers, the writers, everybody snaps you a little bit because Logan gives them the paddock. He makes them sign an NDA and gives them the paddock. Right. But you're just like, was that nice? Was that yeah, nice? Yeah, it's brutal. And the ending uh, shot of it sitting on the table. Ultimately, you know, you you raised a son that could do something so brutal, uh, so mean to uh, a child. Yeah. Uh, something so mean to the people that are, you know, making their living, helping you, making your life easy. So that really sets the tone for like, well, okay, Ro Roman's an asshole. Uh, and I kind of get why, because his father seems like an Asshole. Right. Um, it's it's very uncomfortable from minute one, right? But oh, watches yeah. play an important role from minute one. The last scene or the one of the last shots in the in the episode is this family in their you know very 
basically lower, you know, lower class, you know, kind of small, tight quarters apartment in contrast to all these big $50 million estates. And uh, the paddock box is just on there. You know, what, what are they even going to do with this? You're right. The watch is wear just sitting. It. Yeah, exactly. And sell it, right? Oh, yeah. Very uncomfortable. Very, Very uncomfortable. incredibly uncomfortable. Okay. That being said, yeah. what watch does Logan wear? Yeah, he has a watch. It's unimportant. He has a watch. They show a shot of this white watch. I read an article where they guess it's this IWC. I don't think that's correct. It looks, yeah. it looks way too small. There's a circle around the dial. Yeah, if anything, it looks more Cartier, but even not that. No. no one knows. I couldn't find any information. But also, Logan doesn't really seem like the guy that is flashing his money outside of his obvious like mansions and stuff like Logan that. doesn't care. Yeah. Logan no. Logan's been a billionaire for a very, for very, very, long time. very long There's time. There's no more care left of that. There's no more care at all. Yeah. Who do you think lines up with that the most from Logan's kids? So for oh I, I suppose Roman, right? Roman does lives to no degree like this opulent life that you would expect. And he's a very key player at the end. That's he's the guy where his watch is who you're like Interesting. You you're gonna diverge somehow. Yes. Yes. Watches are unimportant to the time. They can't speed, slow, or stop it, and our phones tell it better. But as vessels for memories, they know few rivals. Okay, what's the next watch we want to discuss? Let's hop into Shiv, because Shiv doesn't really have the most large, or doesn't have the craziest watch collection. Mm -hmm. That probably goes to Kendall, which we'll cover soon. But Shiv also is a very interesting reflection of, like, women and watches. Because mm -hmm. if you say, if a, a woman is saying to you, I want a woman's watch. I don't want a, a larger paddock or mm -hmm. anything like that. It has to be a woman's mm -hmm. watch. I am a billionaire. What mm -hmm. watch do you recommend? Yeah, I mean, you probably recommend the Cartier Panther. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah, a millionaire yeah, yeah. Panther. Yeah. I have 100000 I want to spend. Panther. Panther. Yeah. yeah. The Cartier Panther is that good of a watch. It's delicate. It's still sporty enough, right? It's it's really a, a flawless, you know, wristwatch, particularly in yellow gold, but in stainless steel as well. I mean, these are, these are phenomenal watches. I love buying them. I love selling them. These are phenomenal watches, and it makes perfect sense. This is just the, you know, peak of, you know, uh, feminine wealth. Oh, yeah. yeah. You go Panther. And it's you crazy because... You can go up, you can get any watch you want, but you go Panther. Okay, so contrasted from Shiv is Jerry, the other really female power player in the film. And did you see it on, I forget which episodes, maybe maybe episode two of season four, a glint of the polished bracelet hits the lens. Of, the, of a precious metal, probably rose gold royal oak. Yes. So now let's assume that the costume designer the prop designer yeah. is truly great, and, and we'll talk more about that later because I believe they are. We've we've talked about this before, yeah. and this was intentional. Yeah. Why is Jerry a Royal Oak when Shiv is a Panther? It's not a trick question. New old money. New I wasn't like, even well, going I that even far. say that she's. Oh, interesting. Yeah. We're even going that far. Yeah. Flashier. She's harder. She's brutal. Shiv is emotional. Shiv is more feminine. Shiv, Jerry is a Shiv cold is shell of a woman. Wow. Jerry. Uh, is, is really low-key horrible. Yeah. You know, oh, not even low-key. Yeah, it's like high-key. Oh, yeah. yeah. I have so, to do what's best for the company. Exactly. Like, she's completely full of shit. She yeah. has taken taken advantage or whatever of Roman's sickness. Yeah. I mean, she is, she's fucking brutal. And, yeah. and the Royal Oak is a brutalist watch. Whereas the Panther, yes, there's a power play there. There's, a, there's power there. Sure. But it's more delicate. It's the same thing that I said just a couple weeks ago about... Uh, uh, in the movie Wall Street. Gordon mm -hmm. Gecko is wearing a brutalist Cartier Santos Carré. It's a brutalist watch. Yep. It's his underling wore the Panther. It's a softer watch. Yeah. It's it's more delicate. You're not serious people. You're not serious people. <sighs> Brutal. So, so that again, assuming the set designer thinks thought that much about watches. Which I think they did. I would say they did. Or they got it completely right and they stepped which I doubt, right? They, yeah. they, they, this seems completely intentional. I also just realized in the most... Succession writer's fashion. I forgot to include any watches that Connor wears. That's true. That's true. <laughs> now, do, do you know so far as Royal Oak is concerned, who else started wearing a Royal Oak very conveniently in season four? 
our British friend Tom Wobscam. Wobscams. Wobscams. Yes. A very, very flashy watch. Someone who has also become much harder. In the last episode of season three, Tom completely screwed his wife and his peers and sided with Logan. And now all of a sudden he's wearing a brutalist watch, a Royal Oak. And I would even say, interestingly, if we now we're comparing characters based off their watches, compared to Jerry, even more brutalist. Because he has the chrono. He has the chrono. Yeah. yeah. It, can you? Can I get any more aggressive? Can I get a bigger watch exactly. than that? Exactly. And his. And, and again, you know, speaking about the the clothing design, um, I was reading an article just the other day about about how Tom's clothing has changed, and he's become way more uh, conservative. Very similar to Greg, they've mm. started really dressing like the corporate, very clean uh, uh, guys. There's no more. There's no more. They don't seem new here anymore. There's also no, like, the likability of those two characters is still, for me, all time high because they're hysterical together. But in general, you're like, you guys are terrible. Yeah. Like, you're not, you're not, like, scrappy, like, in the bad basement throwing, which was hysterical, but, yes. like, throwing tables and stuff. Like, exactly. You guys are terrible people. So I think this Royal Oak was very, very intentional. And what's crazy about them buying all these watches is obviously they're billionaires. So these are literally toys at that point. Mm-hmm. And so to them, kind of, is the art market. And right. this video is sponsored by Masterworks, where you don't have to be a billionaire to invest in art. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so many of the, the pieces that we're talking about in, in watches are unaffordable, right? We're talking about things that are you know, tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, and, right. and, and art is even worse, both very strong markets, great markets. We're talking about millions of dollars for a particular interesting in, you know, uh, investment grade piece of art. You can't afford it. I can't afford it. I mean, you, you can't afford it, right? Uh, I mean, it's, you I know. I discuss my finances. It's, right. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's completely unattainable for, for the vast majority of us. Um, but that's the problem that Masterworks has fixed. They've taken the art market and, and the investment world kind of by storm mm-hmm. by democratizing this this trading, by allowing thousands and thousands of people, right, to have these fractional shares of remarkable investment grade art like Picasso, Picasso and Banksy. Banksy. Monet. Exactly. So that everyone then can acquire mm-hmm. and then ultimately, you know, reap the benefits at sale um, of, of trading truly noteworthy pieces. This doesn't exist in watches. I, I wish it did. It does not. Right. Um, but the art market is, is even larger, even stronger. Um, and, and it's been and around, the, or, I don't want to say, long, well, yeah, longer. A long, it's been around far, far longer. longer. So Masterworks' last three sales have delivered 13.9%, 17.8%, and 21.5% net returns to investors. Masterwork has had 11 sales to date, nine of them in 2022 alone. And their most recent painting sold in late December for 35% more <laughs> Which return. is just insane, 35% net return. And with a total of $18 billion, 2022 was the best auction year ever. And in the first five months of 2022, um, the, the average piece of art sold 26% higher in value at auction, right? You need access to auctions like this. Of course. Um, and, and Masterworks clearly has it. Nearly 650,000 people have signed up for Masterworks to date, uh, which is insane. Yeah, and, and with the you know, chaos in the market, the, you know, the art market is growing and expanding and actually flourishing like we talked about. And you can actually skip the waitlist by using the link below in our description. Now, moving on to the next person, right? If you don't mind, right? Take it, I don't know who you're talking about. Greg, I just mentioned Greg, right? Oh, the clothing. Oh, yes. So now what does Greg's watch say about him? Go. Which one? He only has one, right? Uh, I, oh, you're probably right. Yeah. What does it say about him? That he's a sucker, I guess. Well, he's a sucker, and it's the first watch you buy, right? He got a black Rolex Samaria. Yeah, yeah. That's the first watch you buy when you've got money, is what is what our friend Paul says, right? Yeah. It's the it's your first promotion. Yeah. And it's, it's a great watch. It's not a disrespect to the of watch. Of course. Right? And it's also a, a real demonstration in using watches in the same way as, or a similar way as season one. But kind of reverse. Yeah. Like season one is Tom sucking up to Logan. I got you this watch. And then it's reversed when, which you can compare it to Logan there too. But Greg thinks this Samariner is a gift from Kendall. Yes. And Kendall's like, you got to pay for that watch. He's very naive, thinking it was a gift. He paid $40,000 for a Submariner. It's just a disaster. Yeah. It's just a disaster. Yeah. Uh, and I think that, again, the choosing of the Submariner was perfect. That's the first watch you get. You know, he's desperately trying to talk about why it's cool to everybody. He's like, yeah, it's pretty. And everyone's like, 
I don't care. It's whatever. It doesn't it's, matter. Dude, no one cares. No one cares about so, that. So, yeah, it's perfectly falling in line, right? What is the kid that's green around the gills that got his first couple of paychecks, the big paychecks? What do you get? You get a black sub. Yeah. And he got one. And he paid $40,000 for it. Dude, it's a steal in these days. And what does Tom wear in the first episode? Do you know? I don't know. Tell me. He wears a Panerai. Tom As he's wears a to Panerai. Learn. Yeah. That's, I, didn't, I don't remember that. Yeah. Very interesting. Again, that's a green around the gills watch too, right? It's kind of a new here watch. Yeah. Now, again, I love Panerai. It's, uh, it's not even saying it's a bad watch. It's just saying that's one of the initial watches that you probably. How funny! That's right. That is a Panerai. Yeah. There you go. Both divers, Greg and Tom. Fascinating. Yeah. That is not a you know senior you know executive watch in the billionaire world, right? It's yeah. It's just not right. He was new there. Exactly. That's interesting. We see Tom is rocking a Santos. Someone wrote that he wears those watches because his wife wears a Cartier, and of course he just wears whatever his wife wears, right? Because their relationship is so such that he just... In these seasons, at least, yeah. He's he's so codependent, and he really loves her, and, you know, I mean, he's devoted to her, and she just doesn't give a at all. And now he wears the AP. And now he wears the AP. Don't tell me that's an accident. Don't tell me that's an accident. Right. Come on, it's, it's not. Brilliant. It's it's if someone's job is to like set things up, like this is what you wear, this is what you do. This it's like, yeah, of course they're gonna look into. It's it. amazing. I love, but they're so good. I mean, it's so so bright, so intelligent. Truly. Um, all right, what's another one? I think we should hit up Kendall. Let's do it. Kendall, I feel like is probably the most traumatized by everything. Mm. So, well, for multiple reasons, both what we see in the show and what is presumed to happen have happened before the show. But Kendall just goes through watches like crazy. As opposed to Roman, As right? opposed to Roman, who we'll, we'll talk about him specifically yep. at the end. Yep. But Kendall rips through money. I'd say the only person that we see rip through money more is probably Connor. Mm, yes. Which is interesting that we don't totally also see what watching yeah. is. And that is what we've talked about before, too, where succession is like, this whole time you're watching it, you're expecting them to have financial troubles. Mm. Like, $63 million for this place? Yeah. Okay, done. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. And you're like, ooh, that's going to hurt. And then it never comes Never out. does. Yeah. But we see Kendall kind of go through his trauma or his stress or whatever it may be. It seems like by just spending a ton of money, going off the grid, mm-hmm. and then not caring about anything. Mm-hmm. And we see that, especially when we're looking at the Vacheron collection that he has. This watch is a Vacheron Harmony Mono Pusher Chronograph. Insane. Which is insane. And he wears it when he's rapping on his birthday. Yep. That's an incredible watch. It's an insane watch. He also wears a traditional world time, insane. again, Vacheron, which is interesting because if you're the guy gunning to be CEO and you want to stand out, mm-hmm. do you wear AP, Paddock, or Vacheron? That's a good question. We'll get into that towards the end. And then we, obviously, we hop over to the Nautilus. Mm-hmm. Nothing too, too crazy. Yep. But you have some information about his RM that he his wore last RM, season. Yes. For, for, from what I have heard, uh, his RM, which was just worn in the most recent episode, uh, was, uh, was a piece unique uh, made by Richard Mill for the show. Wow. Which is a terrific marketing move. Terrific move. Now, I think, just for a second, what's interesting is, you know, we're talking before about, about Logan, then mm-hmm. we're talking about Kendall and, and Roman, right? This this kind of triad, right? Which son represents which part of the father, you right. know? And and Roman, Whoa. as we'll find out in a second, a wears crazy. nothing of significance. Yep. I have a watch. Yep. I don't need a watch. I have a watch. He wears a, we'll find out, he wears a Rolex Datejust and an IWC. Nothing crazy, even though he's yep. a billionaire, yep. right? Kendall is constantly buying different watches. So what does this say? Well, Kendall certainly is more materialistic and aggressive and you know, he's pursuing stronger throughout the show. Right. Not to say that Roman isn't at all, but Roman's only asset is his gut, mm-hmm. right? Roman is almost unconcerned with the rest of it. He knows nothing about business. He knows nothing about anything. But he does have a good gut instinct. And he does That's seem a family trust. the most authentic to himself. Exactly. He doesn't go, well, what's the most expensive watch I can... Exactly. What's the most expensive watch I can leave here with? <laughs> yeah. Or exactly. something like that. So, interesting. I, th- I do think that was a really smart move on RM's part. Yep. But who gets to keep the watch? Who gets... I would imagine he, he, he very well might be able to keep the watch. That would be a crazy set One gift. more thing. When does... So, that, that first line that, that Logan says, I already have a watch. Yep. When does that reappear? Do you remember? No. On Kendall's birthday, His, when Naomi oh. gifts him a watch, and he cannot fathom why she would gift him a watch. Right. He says, I don't understand. I already have a watch. Why would you? I'm just trying to figure out why you would give me a watch. And he goes to check the case back. Oh, is it inscribed? And she's like, no, I, I'm sorry. It's just a bad gift. And he's like, no, I'm just trying to figure out why you would do that. Oh. I can't figure out why you would just give me a watch. I have one. And that is his dad in a nutshell, right? right. You are in many ways becoming exactly what you hate. 
Interesting. I always thought that was because he was like, you don't really know me at all. Is it? I they seem to like each other quite a bit. She yeah. was maybe a bad influence because she had the drug problems, but she seemed to know him. I, I don't know. I don't know. Wow. I don't know. Wow. Brutal. Yeah, I forgot about that. It was, I think it was more of a remark on Kendall than it was on Naomi. I mean, realistically, I mean, yeah. I think that every birthday gift is more of a remark on the recipient or the interaction, right? Like, what you get me, well, you happen to give very good gifts. But in general, what people get me for my birthday, it's like, okay, as long as it's good, I... I'll tell a story on the podcast about birth, about Christmas gifts later. You it's, talk about mine, how terrible they are. No, I have a terrible one. But really? it really says a lot more about the individual that's receiving it and how they receive a gift with with, with grace, presumably, yeah. or not with grace. And he and his father both received gifts very callously, uh, brutally. Yeah. Brutally. Romulus. Yep. A quote that I can't quote perfectly, but when they're making the deal to buy Pierce, mm. it's like, do you guys realize how much $500 million is? And he's desperately pleading with him, pleading with his family, his uh, siblings, being like, maybe we don't spend an extra five hundred million. We just keep it so we can survive. Like maybe we just have five hundred million. We just spend it on f- boats and on f- boats. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and it, he's saying it incredibly funny, but it, they it shows that like nobody else understands how much five hundred million is. Yes. And then they proceed to raise the price up of their offer, not by five hundred million. Two two billion. Two billion. Two billion. Well. Logan was far below all. Logan was at six. Yeah. And they were at eight and they went to 10. Which is an incredible play on Pierce's part, yep. for one. But two, just shows out of the three, there's one person who has a grasp on reality. Yes. There's one guy that's like, maybe we should slow down. Maybe and he's also guess. the one that wears the least expensive watches. Exactly. Not a coincidence at all. Not a coincidence at all. And this is, this would really be incredible for the watch nerdy world. If it turns out that at the end of Succession, this is the last season, he is the voice of reason. Mm. He is the one that steers the ship. He's the one that ends up with everything or or does something dramatic. It makes sense because of his watches. Like yes. you could have accurately said, that guy's probably the humble one. Yes. Isn't that incredible? It, it totally is. I think that there are a couple, a couple of things I want to say. And number one is millions, billions, trillions, of, a day just is a great watch. Oh, yeah. And people like to forget that because people are always looking at the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And people forget that the day just is a really great watch. People forget watch. that. I mean, watches that are far inferior to the day just are great watches. But the day just really is a is a hallmark. It's an icon of watchmaking. Yes. Um, and it's phenomenal. And, and that watch belongs on your wrist no matter how much money you have, meaning in excess of being able to afford it, right? Someone with... A billion dollars. It's the Panther for, for the women's side. A hundred percent. It's that yeah. good of a watch. So I love that they put a date just on his wrist. It's good enough so you know that, okay, you're wearing a good watch. Yeah, right, right. Um, but it's it's just like, you don't need it to be better. You know what I mean? Like, if he was wearing a Casio, it would be making a larger remark than if he was wearing a Rolex. Yeah. That, at you that know? level, you're like, this guy's going to He's making a point. leave his family or something like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah, right. uh, you know, Logan... Um, what, which child will be able to usher into the future, right? I think that, like all, like with all things, right, no child will be able to do it alone. It is really just everyone is, all three together of them, all three together make up what the father could possibly do. And so it's it's, it's really so fascinating. There is yeah. no successor that could do what he did. You know, it's yeah, just, yeah. it doesn't work that way. Interesting. Do you think it'll end like that? I don't know. I, but, but, but. It'll end with complete betrayal that everyone hates each other. It will not end happy and it will work because that's how Logan designed it. Interesting. Which is, by the way, the worst thing you could possibly do for your family. Oh, oh yeah. It's the worst. destroyed his family. Yeah, yeah, you destroy your family and great. They got to usher into the new generation of more billions. It sucks. You think it'll work? The company? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They'll win. I think so too. They'll win. I think. Because if they lose, he lost. Yeah. And he he doesn't lose. He doesn't lose. He doesn't lose. He doesn't lose. That's it. Interesting. Dude, the... Spoilers, of course. Is it an underline or cross out? Is brilliant. It's brilliant. Is so brilliant. It's brilliant. And it's not crossed out at Kendall. It's crossed out at Roy, which is even further brilliant. Bizarre. Oh my god. Bizarre. So good. The other, the only last thing about Roman's watches is the article that we were checking this out says that it looks like he's wearing an IWC. That's probably right, but. On an alternative shot, it kind of does look like it could be a Longines Spirit, which is a, uh, they're both statements, but a Longines Spirit would be wild. Yeah, I, I think it's an IWC. It probably The is. case it's, doesn't look like it, but but everything else does. Everything else does, but it really comes close to a spirit. Yeah, it does. You're right. Either way, You're it doesn't right. particularly matter. It's a statement there of just like, 
yeah, it's great. Like, yeah. like my siblings are off in Cartier and Paddock and VC. Like, I think this IWC is pretty cool. Yeah, totally. And it also tends to Carolina when she comes back to collect her stuff and she's like saying, we're going to get married. And oh, Carrie. Stuff. Carrie. She's like, we're, we're going to get married and this and that. Greg is being brutal to her. Greg's Greg is trying to shuffle her, shuffle her out. He's trying to kiss up to everybody. And the only guy that comes in is our IWC sporting friend, Roman, that's like, I don't, I don't think I have your personal number. Can I get your personal number? I'm like, let's <laughs> chat. Yeah. I'm like, that shows something that no one else has shown so yes, far. Yes, completely. It's interesting. Yeah, I mean, well, before we talked about these watches, because this is the first time we're actually sitting down discussing these watches and their yeah. significance. Yeah. Um, but you and I have talked before, you brought it to my attention, actually, that this, the costume designer had made a remark about their lack of coats. Do you remember this? Their lack of coats. That they don't wear coats. Because they're never cold. They go from a limo to a building. Oh, yeah. They don't yeah. walk. Yeah, you know? right. And, 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 and even, even the actors were like, yeah, it's like, because they're, they're not that rich. Like, they're, they're rich, but they're not that rich. Yeah, of and they're like, no, we don't live lives like this at <laughs> all. Like, this has been bizarre. To pretend to be a billionaire for four years, it must be because, again, it's, you know, it's, it's a big difference between having $10 million and having a billion dollars. It's very, there's, very different. There's a difference that's probably unfathomable to anyone that doesn't have a billion. Dollars. Yeah. What is it? What is it? it it's a, a, a million. A million seconds is thirteen oh, days. Yeah. Right. And a billion seconds is like thirty three years. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not even f-ing close. It's it's one of those things. Like I said, the whole when you watch Succession, they don't talk about money really. But when they do, you're like, uh oh. Yeah. Connor spent one hundred and fifty million dollars. That can't be good. That can't be. And good. nothing happens. And nothing. And happens. maybe it will happen. Yeah. But the crazy part is that constant realization of like, no, it's that's that's how it works. It's insane. Yeah, it's insane. They just offered nine billion dollars yeah. to buy something. Yeah, yeah. In other news, uh, LVMH purchased the rights to Succession. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. It's 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 wild. I mean, phenomenal show. I think that the costume designer did a, a truly insane job uh, picking out these watches. Props to them. Props, props, props. Oh, yeah. um, I don't think any of this was an accident. I think this was absolutely brilliant. I think that the that the costume designer or whoever consulted them on this sure. understands watches better than most watch enthusiasts. Oh, yeah. I don't think that many watch enthusiasts could have looked at the set and understood completely where it made sense and where, you know. I think the best display of that, too, is like, okay, Kendall's, Kendall's rap party, the obvious choice is Hublot. Right. But no, he's no. not going to wear that. No, he he's doesn't going wear, to wear Hublot. A large VC because he's not looking at Hublot. He's yeah. looking at the size of the watch because yeah. he thinks it's funny. I want to have bling, right? So exactly. he picks a large watch. Exactly. But of course, it's a Vacheron. Of course. Yeah. If I'm, you know, if you're if you're going uh, on a camping trip, I don't go to a camping store. I ask my Laurel Piana sales rep what they have for camping. Exactly. I don't go to Hublot. I ask my VC guy. Exactly. Like, I, you know, it's it's, it's, it's true. Not, yeah. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. It's fascinating. That's it's fascinating. where you're like, oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. Of course, because the obvious choice is Hublot. Yeah. Of course not. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but that's it. That's it. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Thank you to the Creative Succession for being absolutely brilliant and filling the last four years of our lives with quite a bit of joy. And let's get the f*** out of here. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>